Can you hear me okay? Like this? Yes. So I guess I'm here to talk about, you know, the other side of the spectrum is, is how to house people who are loitering the streets. I didn't intend to do this, but the timing is, is just seems appropriate. So our organization, Community Supported Shelters, uh, developed a micro shelter in late 2012, which uh, gives a, a lockable, safe, dry place for somebody to store belongings, sleep, and to feel secure. Um, we're not really housing the kind of people that uh, Sergeant Cropton talked about, um, but we do work with a, a wide variety of, of people who are considered unhoused or homeless. And uh, we do work with behavior. Uh, the main reason I'm coming here to, to you guys, or why I've been invited here, is to, uh, we just applied for a neighborhood matching grant, which actually spans six neighborhood associations with our, uh, concerning our Conestoga huts. And when we started the Conestoga huts, we weren't really sure when, uh, when we were going to stop making them, but the need has only grown since we started making them. So we've made 41 to, to, to date, but there's only two in the, neighbor, in the downtown neighborhood association. And just to give you an idea about how the program works, we just don't put people in there and say, here you go, see you later. Uh, uh, Shelter Care, another organization that deals with mental health issues, that's their primary focus, manages one of the Conestoga huts that's ADA accessible at 1144 Oak Street, that's the First Christian Church building. There's one in the alleyway over there, and the other one is also there uh, behind the church. And uh, it's kind of a rough spot for huts, that's why there's probably not a whole lot of them downtown because of all the other activity. The people that are in the huts are actually very me medical, medically fragile, people who don't have any other place to go, uh, and luckily there's these spots for them to be you know, relatively safe from being out in the general pool of homelessness, uh, which we, we see as a, as a major issue uh, in general. If it was up to us, we would, you know, we have a project right now where we're looking at, you know, somehow getting a county facility that's 40 miles out of town to help, uh, to help people kind of reboot from the accessibility to drugs and alcohol, which, which in our analysis creates a lot of the the behavior that we see that's disruptive. So our neighborhood matching grant uh, application was for redoing the roofs, a, a kind of a, a very practical, simple thing, because right now the roofs that are on there, they have a probably a, a four year lifespan, and we wanted something that wasn't gonna start breaking down. It's like, it's similar to a greenhouse plastic, but yet more durable than a greenhouse plastic. But uh, we wanted to reduce um, the, the probability of these roofs breaking down and then the sh shelter leaking and getting plastic particles all over the place. So, um, so we so we've gone through that and we're going to replace the roofs with a with TPO, which is called which is thermoplastic overlay. It's a 30-year roof. It's more durable. It's got a higher R value. And, and it looks a little bit nicer. Does anybody, has anybody ever here seen the huts that are behind First Green Church? Okay, great. Did you know about them before this meeting? Great. Um, and I'm open to any feedback about those huts, if, if you have any. Um, uh, the people that are there now are, 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 again, I'll say that they're not the people that Crompton was talking about. And we're, we have no interest in putting a bunch of huts downtown. Um, it's, it's not a good environment for people rehabilitating uh, from, from negative behaviors. So another part of our community supported shelters is that we, we manage three rest stop camps. Do you guys know what rest stops are? Anybody not know where they are? No, I do not. Okay, it's basically a designated area on city property where 15 individuals can camp legally uh, for an indefinite amount of time. And at these sites, we provide oversight, we provide a set of rules, we provide a platform with a cover over them for their tent um, that's no greater than eight by eight, and a porta potty and trash service. And these are all located 
uh, in a area that sort of corners <coughs> borders the uh, Whitaker neighborhood, the River Road neighborhood, and the Trainsong neighborhood. All three of them are located in that area. Um, I've envisioned before what would it look like downtown. I don't, I don't like what I see. So we have no interest in putting one downtown, just in case you're, you're thinking about that. Um, like I said, I'd rather open something rurally for uh, creating a, a wall of uh, accessibility to a lot of the problems. Uh, but we manage three of those, and they're always at full capacity. There's always a waiting list. And by giving people a little bit of structure, which is one of our, our main goals, is to create a structure that encourages people to uh, reintegrate into the community in a positive way. Um, we do community service work parties once a week. I just got done today with one of the camps. We, went down to the public works building and campers painted two by fours to replace benches that are in a, uh, in a, a city park in the South Hills um, on Hilliard. I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, and we do that every single week. We, we're always doing something. We're either doing invasive weed uh, control, uh, park maintenance of, of a lot of different kinds. And, and the people that we work with really like it. They, it gives them an experience other than being looked at as a bum. Um, and we, we believe that healing comes through uh, being seen differently and having, having that perspective first before, uh, you know, other than just being put into a house and expected to, to get with the program. So we start, we work very closely with our individuals. We make sure that our clients are um, connected to different social services that um, cater to their specific needs. Sometimes it takes a little, it takes us a little bit to understand. Well, what does this person need? So we basically, you know, put them in the camp. We have a, a peer support groups in every single camp that get to know the individual, and uh, we refer people to like La uh, Lane Independent Living Alliance for money management. People who do receive income that are mismanaging it. Um, we talk to the Lane County Behavioral Health Services, we talk to shelter care, uh, we make sure that, you know, if they're a veteran, that they're working with a different veterans agency for housing, and we've probably housed 15 different veterans going through our veterans camp to date, that um, our veterans camp opened in March 2013. Um, so, so we're really working on creating infrastructure for the people who have none. Because uh, we, what we see is that structure usually follows money. If there's money to be made, the structure will be there to capture the money. But for the people that are down at the bottom that don't have money, they also don't have structure for their lives. So then what happens is they basically, you know, there's, there's the rules of the street. And we're, and we're kind of trying to insert ourselves in there to create a different code of conduct as being homeless. So we, we don't consider ourselves ending homelessness, we consider ourselves transforming homelessness to something different, at least in our community, so it can be a win-win a situation for people are, who are housed and people are, who are unhoused. Um, so there's, there's my initial download. Does anybody have any questions about our program, about the project that's been, um, uh, that's happening in the, in the Downtown Neighborhood Association? Um, Eric, could you talk about how you select people for your camps and what kind of people work in the camps and what kind of people don't and, and what the prospects are like for moving beyond that, transitioning as the buzzword goes? Okay. Um, well, first I'm going to say how the, the individuals are selected for the huts that are downtown because it feels more... Um, connected to your guys' group. So shelter care actually chooses for their hut by um, people who have been through their medical respite program. And does anybody know what the medical respite program is that shelter care does? So people who are magic, uh, medically fragile coming out of the emergency room or having surgery, they have access to this, um, this respite program that shelter care does. It's 30 days long. And during those 30 days, they work their, their butts off trying to find them housing so they can use that program as a jump starter to be 
to, to more jumpstart their life in a different direction. Sometimes they can't get it in 30 days, so those people then um, transfer to the hut. So the other hut is managed by our organization, and we just, nobody's really a good candidate for that hut, because it's right on the alleyway where um, the Black Forest is, and it's a really tough neighborhood. Everybody who's been in there is, is, is very miserable. Um, but uh, they're also, you know, you know, we choose medical, medical fragile people. There's somebody right now who has epilepsy and is, is pretty small um, and has business downtown that they're working on. He's working on his um, getting help with his epilepsy. Okay, so going to the camps. The camps, we, we run a little bit differently. We don't, if somebody is a, what we consider a tough case, you know, we will take them as long as we only have two tough cases per camp. And that's our strategy because we, we recognize that the tough cases, they need help too. Um, and, our, and our idea is that they, because they're outnumbered by people who have a different kind of focus in their life, that, that there's a, a rubbing off that can happen. Some tough cases work out well and, you know, they get... They get used to the culture of the camp, which is very positive. Anybody here is welcome to come down to any of our meetings and work parties and, and, and meet the people that are down there. And, um, and each camp focuses on a different population as well. We have one camp that focuses on youth, and that we classify that as 25 to 40 years old. Um, we have one camp that just focuses on veterans that are working with either St. Vincent de Paul or, or, HUT, or, or um, the VA. And we have a really tight relationship with the VA. Most of the time, it's either the VA or St. Vinny's who's bringing us clients that they're working on getting housed. And then the other camp focuses, again, on people with medical um, disabilities or mental disabilities. And um, that's because it's on a bus line. It's